on the news, petrol tanker explodes in River State. Senate seeks 300 billion naira special intervention fund for Niger State. A Niger Navy distances itself from officer who accused Chadian soldiers of selling arms. I'm glad to have you join us on News Now. I am Fola Shadi or Green Day. We begin in River State where two tankers conveying petroleum products exploded in the early hours of Tuesday while trying to avoid a police checkpoint along the Elele Oweri Road in the Kweri local government area of the state. The inferno that resulted from the blast was said to have spread in the community, destroying houses, valuable properties and leaving some persons severely injured. Eyewitnesses report that the tax force was trying to extort one of the tanker drivers while another on speed lost control and hits the stationary one at the checkpoint. Both tankers then fell, spilled their contents and burst into flames. Following the incident, angry youths from the community went on rampage, destroying other tax force checkpoints in the community. While still in River State, the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has commissioned the Police Special Protection Unit Base 6 at Omagwa in the Kwere local government area of River State. A Vice President, Yemi Oshimbaje, commissioned the base alongside the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godzwe Lakpabio, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, and other top dignitaries. In his address, Oshimbaje said the facility will help resolve the accommodation challenges of the security operatives, while Lakpabio pledged more commitment to the transformation of the Niger Delta region. This project, the Special Protection Unit, the Six Barracks, was built and donated by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, NDDC, to the Nigeria Police Force. It consists of 66 apartments for the accommodation of senior officers of the Special Protection Unit. It also comprises a five-bedroom commander's quarters, functional office accommodation, a sentry post, guard room with armory, and a parade ground of the Nigeria Police Force built by the Niger Delta Development Commission. This project is important because it is a means by which we can alleviate the accommodation challenges of senior security personnel posted to River State and ultimately enhance the security footprint in the region. The Niger Delta region has been neglected in the past and so it needs so much development that whatever you bring out looks like a drop of water in an ocean. But be rest assured that this is the, a giant step forward and, uh, and, and I'm also involved and that means that God Almighty will assist us to bring uncommon transformation to Niger Delta. On his part, River State Governor Yesom Wike will lament the delay in the commissioning of the project. Also called for more synergy between the NDDC and states in the region. Look at a project like this that was awarded 2011-12. Ten years after is when we are commissioning it. This project shouldn't last one year. The only problem, sir, I have with the NDDC. No synergy with the states. You end up in somebody's state. You don't even know the development plan of the state. You start distorting the development plan of the state. The road you want to do is not your road. You want to know you want the alliance with the state and say, look, what project do you want in this state? We are not interested in who will be the contractor. Our interest is that we are synergizing with you so that you don't repeat those things we are doing. Let us leave this politics. The governor of River State is PDP. The governor of Akwaibom is a PDP. The governor of Delta is PDP. The governor of Edo is PDP. So, forget them. If you say forget them, you are doing more harm to the people. The Nigerian Senate has urged the federal government to declare a state of emergency on critical roads in Niger states and provide a sum of 300 billion naira as emergency intervention funds for the dilapidated roads in the state. Uh, this was part of the resolutions reached during plenary on Tuesday. Our correspondent Simisaladigun has the details. 
For more than four days now, tanker drivers have been protesting in Bida, Niger State, blocking major exits from the town over the deplorable condition of roads in the state. In response to this, Niger North Senator and Deputy Chief Whip of the Senate, Aliyu Abdullahi, moved a motion for an intervention fund to be made available urgently. The main trunk road from Jeba to Mokwa to Tegina to Kaduna has been completely abandoned, even though contracts have been awarded for the Jeba to Tegina section 1 and 2 since 2018, without funds sufficient to even mobilize the contractors. All the federal government to consider an emergency intervention fund for the critical roads in Niger State to the tune of 300 billion to concurrently fix the roads as part of the infrastructure rehabilitation efforts of the government to support ease of business and economic recovery across the country. Other Niger lawmakers also accused the Federal Ministry of Works of bias in road construction and repairs in Niger State. The budgetary allocation to all the roads in Niger State was about 9 billion naira. This year, 2021, the budgetary allocation to all the roads in Niger State was 4.6 billion. The road contracts in Niger State are about 15. The total contract sum for all those projects is about 250 billion. Only about 60 billion paid. At the pace of the budgetary allocation to, to rehabilitate the roads in Niger State, it will take eternity to fix the roads in Niger State. Nigeria is a large country and we need everywhere to be taken seriously. The Minister of Works is one-sided. I don't see the reason why other states will benefit from federal roads and Niger State will not have it. Also, during plenary, the Senate received a request from President Mohamed Buhari. Confirmation of appointment of commissioners to fill vacancies at the Independent Corrupt Practices and other related offences commission in accordance with the provision of section 3 subsection 6 of the corrupt practices and other related offences act 2000 a right to forward for confirmation by the senate the appointment of the underlisted nominees as commissioners representing the southwest south south northeast and southeast at the independent corrupt practices and other related offences commission icpc it is my hope that the distinguished Senate will consider and confirm the nominees in the usual expeditious manner. Please accept the distinguished Senate President the assurances of my highest consideration. In another letter, President Buhari requested the upper chamber to confirm the appointment of Mohamed Sani Baba as Federal Commissioner for Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission representing Bauchi State. Semi TV 360 News. The Director of Legal Services, Niger Navy Commodore Jamila Malafa, says for Niger to experience lasting peace, there must be concerted efforts to end the proliferation of small arms in the country. Speaking during a public hearing by the House of Representatives Committee on National Security and Intelligence on the bill seeking to establish the National Commission against the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, Malafa revealed that Chadian soldiers sell guns for as low as $20, posing a threat to the to Nigeria's security. She also called for serious surveillance between Nigeria and neighboring countries. Some of these countries that we, are, we have uh, border with have no armory. They do not have armories. So most of their arms that are being donated by the uh, let me, I don't want to be specific, by the developed countries in the name of uh, assisting us to fight our problems are compounding our problems in Nigeria. Because you find out that an each average Chadian soldier has 20 to 30 arms underneath his bed. When he's broke, he brings it out and sells it for $30, $20. I am here, I am standing here, and I'm saying it. Since we are going to collaborate with ECOWAS and other countries that are donating such arms to these countries, I think we should insist that they should either enact laws 
to govern the handling of these arms and ammunition or build an armory for these countries or else we will not see peace. The CCTV that we are advocating for, in my opinion, though the self even Berlin Wall has been knocked down, I think we should build a wall between us and these neighboring countries or we should have a serious surveillance. Joining us now to speak more on this is retired Colonel Hassan Stan Labe, who is also a security consultant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. The naval officer made some interesting comments. But what's your reaction to this revelation? And of course, the statements by the Nigerian Navy are dissociating itself from the comments. Well, thank you very much. Even though your audio is very low, uh, let me attempt to respond. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I don't see why there will be so much um, opposition or castigation from the spokesperson of the Navy who made those comments. Because as a matter of fact, uh, when you look at the countries uh, she's referring to, Chad and so on, all these are work on areas. And let's just talk with ourselves. And the events or the activities she's talking about are all part of a, a, a post-combat operation uh, activities that you see. We will test this in Syria alone and Liberia immediately after the entire Dama uh, Ekumog operation, all right? And um, of course, there was so much sale of small arms, uh, light weapons all over the place. And if you look at our northern fringes, uh, look at the countries that make up our northern fringes, our neighbors up north, Chad, Niger, and so on, all these are countries that are highly rest, like we all know. And of course, given their nature of restiveness, their linkages to the Maghreb, to countries like uh, uh, Libya and so on. And of course, too, when you consider the fact that um, uh, they have linkages with all these uh, 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 terrorist organizations, the ISWA, with Al Qaeda and so on, all these are their areas of oppression and so on. So you expect to see small arms and light weapons, you know, uh, all over the place, you know. And of course, it has a way of uh, impacting on Nigeria by way of uh, proliferation of these weapons into our country. So I, I don't see anything wrong in what you have said. It's a statement of fact. And you find all this everywhere where you've had um, a conflict, you know, that have just uh, taken place. These are post conflict activities. All right? Thank you so much for your contributions to the news. But no fewer than 42 protesting members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria have been arrested uh, by the police in Abuja on Tuesday. The spokesperson for the police, Josephine Ade, said the suspects were nabbed at the Kuba Gwaripa axis of Abuja after they stormed the area in large numbers, obstructing traffic and throwing stones and explosives at police operatives. In a press briefing shortly after the incident, Abdullahi Musa, the spokesperson, Academic Forum for Islamic Movement in Nigeria, accused security officers of killing eight persons in the clash. Like eight people were killed. We are yet to even confirm how many, but for now the record I have is eight people. And I'm not sure even all the eight people are, are, are part of us because it's a place like, just like a marketplace. That place is a bus stop in Guarimpa. Where you see this Kekenape, many of them were there. And even one of them was shot on his face. I saw him... Uh, he was taken away by some people to, for treatments. This is not the first time. And those soldiers that joined the police in this killing were guard brigade, brigade of guard. And I think all of us were uh, aware that guard brigade were only answerable to Mr. President. So what happens today, the crime commit, committed against humanity here in Abuja today, Buhari is responsible for that. The president because guard brigades are only answerable to Mr. President. It happens in 2018. On 29th October 2018 at Karo Bridge, the same guard brigade attacked us. They killed 41 people, innocent people, unjustifiably. The, the, the perpetrators must be brought to book. Artistic gifts come in different forms and in unexpected locations. In Nigeria, the use of paint or charcoal is a more common tool for drawing, but a young Nigerian artist stands out using just pencils. His hyper-realistic drawing using an unusual tool stems from a childhood passion, he says, has been nurtured into a career. TV3 sister Abisola Adebayo has the details. 
is arguably one of Nigeria's finest pencil artists. Fisayo Emmanuel is a graduate of geography and planning science from one of Nigeria's reputable universities, but his love for drawing made him pursue a second degree in fine art at the Kere Ikiti College of Education. After graduating, he decided to perfect his skills by interning under some professional artists. Few years later, he is now one of the most sought after pencil artists in the country. While I was growing up, I see things and I like to replicate things, do a replica or a copy. Art is something I will, I will do for life. In terms of motivation, I would say the passion behind it and the little change I'm getting out of it is still motivating me and my customer's reviews as well. Like if you work for someone, it's a positive review and referrals. I see my work and I feel like this is me, this is, no one can do this the way I did it. It takes Fisayo about two days to get a portrait done after careful study and this is what the finished work looks like. He says the quality and creativity of his work speaks for itself. I post my jobs online, Instagram, Twitter and WhatsApp mostly. And I, I see people comment, I would like to get a piece, I would like you to work for me, I would like us to work together. Family and friends make referrals. As long as I've, I'm putting my, work, my works out there, I have people that will see it. If you're not patronizing, at least you appreciate like and this and that. So if you're not patronizing at that particular moment, my contact is always there. They will always call me to come back. I think my, the work speaks for itself. When you're putting out work and you see people appreciate it, even the mere appreciation, it's actually it's fulfilling for an artist. But sometimes getting funds and customers can be tough. There are a lot of setbacks, uh, let me say challenges, in terms of finance and uh, patronage, or let me say appreciation. There was a time I made a series of jobs on ground, there was no patronage. Everything was just on ground, so it was not encouraging. Presently, the, the economic situation is affecting everybody and it is affecting us as well. Despite the challenges, Fisayo still works his hands to the bone. His artworks have gone as far as the United States, the United Kingdom, Ukraine and even Ghana. He says all entrepreneurs like him need to thrive in a conducive environment which only the government can provide. Abisola Adibayo, TV360 News. But let's take a break here, but still to come, Mali Minister hints at postponement of election. For details of the story and more right after this break. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the federal government. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On Digi 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We we'll delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it. You need to take action. I don't think I'm sending you from Welcome back. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories. The Nigerian Navy has distanced itself from Commodore Jamila Malafa's comments accusing Chadian soldiers of selling arms illegally. At a public hearing organized by the House of Representatives Committee on National Security and Intelligence, Malafa alleged that Chadian troops sell arms for as low as $20. But spokesman of the Nigerian Navy, Suleiman Dahun, in a statement released on Tuesday, said the view of the officer are personal and did not reflect the position of the Navy. 
Well, we also told you that no fewer than 42 protested members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria have been arrested by the police in Abuja on Tuesday. The spokesperson for the police, Justin Ada, said the suspects were nabbed at the Kubwa Gwaripa axis of Abuja after they stormed the area in large numbers, obstructing traffic and throwing stones and explosives at police operatives. The IMN, however, claimed security officers killed eight persons during the clash. But in case you missed any of our news bulletin, for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv36nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. For more than 2,000 Nigerian and travelers who flouted the country's COVID-19 travel protocols have been banned from traveling abroad and into the country for one year. The National Incidents Manager, NIM, of the Presidential Steering Committee, Mukta Mohammed, disclosed this at its briefing on Monday in Abuja. Mohammed explained that the defaulters failed to undergo the mandatory arrival quarantine and other protocols after returning into the country. He further disclosed that the names of over 2,000 citizens and foreigners have been pissed at all the major federal medical facilities. I will take another break here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Well, up next is business stories and stock markets review with Mary Kanu. Over to you, Mary. Thank you for that, Shadi. And now in business, oil prices continue to surge as Brent crude global oil benchmark climbed to a three-year high amid increasing demand for the commodity. On Tuesday, Brent crude climbed 0.86% to $80.22 a barrel, the highest since October 2018. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures also witnessed a corresponding increase of 1.05% to $76.24 dollar a barrel after oil prices slumped as low as twenty dollar a barrel during the worst of the pandemic today's rise sent crude almost 55 percent higher for the year to date we'll take a break and return with a review of the stock market don't go away It was definitely a red session in the equities market as stocks continue the sluggish movement observed at intraday. Market capitalization dipped to 2245 trillion naira as the all share index cringed again by 0.01%, stoking fears as to when lasting buoyancy will return to the market. Now, two heavy heavyweight equities, Mansard and Afripu, trigger the pullback as the worst performing stocks with over eight naira losses. Now, the bright spot in today's trade could be found in the gainers list as Skyway Aviation Handling Company and Wemmer Bank were the top gainers for today. Now, at the close of today's trade, 526 million volume of shares were traded in 3,535 deals. Now, moving on to the foreign scene, it is a bearish trading day for global stocks. Now, with global markets declining, treasury yields and crude oil prices rising, inflation and interest rate concerns have eroded investors' confidence, which in turn has affected the market. So, we can see that the UK, US and Asian stocks are all trading in the red. FTSE is recording a decline of 0.43%. Uh, Dow Jones is recording a decline of 1.17%. While Asian stock Nikkei also couldn't keep its head above water and is trading in the red at 0.19%. Well, that's all on Stock Market Review. For Lashade, over to you now. Well, thank you so much, Mary, for that update. Now, on the forward scene, the Malian government says elections scheduled for early next year could be postponed by month. 
months. Mali Prime Minister Chogo Omega explained that the elections were being postponed in order to achieve a peaceful election recognized by all. Mega explained that a more detailed agenda will be issued in October following a meeting of a national forum. The elections promised for February 2022 by Colonel Asimi Goita are aimed at restoring civilian rule following a coup in August last year against elected President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Well, up next is Entertainment Report. Controversial cross-dresser Bob Brisky has apologized to his ex-friend Tonto DK for dragging her during her tough times. The duo was known to be the best of friends until they started openly abusing each other. But Brisky accused Tonto of being a drama queen who made away with his money. He has, however, apologized to the popular actress and her fans. Nigerian reality TV star Tatcha has confirmed that she has gone under the knife. The former Big Brother Niger housemate made the stone while answering questions from her fans. And Tatcha joins the list of celebrities who have gone under the knife. And it's been recalled that in 2017, movie star Tonto DK surprised many when a video of her going under the knife for cosmetic surgery was released. Other celebrities who have had cosmetic surgery include Toke Makewa, Laura Ikeji, Toyin Lawani. Shebe Batokbe has debuted the official trailer for his new feature film, Bad Boys and Bridesmaid, produced by Yomi Black and shot by Amarachu Dwezika. The romantic drama is set on the destination wedding of two high school lovers. With only three days to their dream wedding, a series of events attempt to mar their near-perfect union. Bad Boys and Bridesmaid will be Shebe Batokbe's second feature film of the year 2021, following his suspense thriller, Sanitation Day, which premiered in cinemas in January. And that is all that we have for you in the entertainment segment of News Now. Away from entertainment and now to sports, Ngolo Kante will miss Chelsea's Champions League trip to Syria Giants Juventus on Wednesday night after testing positive for coronavirus. The 30-year-old has been an integral figure at Stamford Bridge since the arrival from Leicester City in July 2016, winning the Premier, Champions, Europa Leagues and the FA Cup during his five-year spell with the Blues. The Frenchman, who played for an hour in Chelsea's 1-0 defeat against Manchester City on Saturday, will also be on unavailable for this weekend's Premier League game at home against Southampton. I need to wrap on our news bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fola Shadi. Well, green day. Bye for now.